This is Andy Perwall for Boxing News. I'm joined by Paul Smith Jr. here in Liverpool now. Paul, have you missed me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of seeing you, mate, everywhere, aren't you? I am indeed, but here we are. I'm here in your home city, Liverpool. Always enjoy coming up here. Great card on Saturday night. And Steve Clark, a man you're very excited about. You spoke to me about him out in Quebec. What should everybody expect to see on Saturday night? He's a good kid. He's a nice lad. He's, he's a good fighter, big ticket seller. He's, um, he took a thousand tickets for this. And he's, he's, he's done really well with them. He's, um, he took like 300 up to the AB final in Newcastle. As an amateur, he's, he's got a big back and a big following. Um, good fighter, very good engine on him. ABA champion, as I've said. Um, and the GB set up that isn't a 75 kilo in the Olympics, so he's going to turn professional instead. Um, he's asked me to manage him, and, and I'm, I'm happy with that. He's a, he's a, 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 a returns a fighter, box, box there as an amateur, and he's staying there now as a pro with me, brother Stephen. So it's, um, it's exciting, yeah. He's making his debut Saturday night. I can't wait. Family conflict over how to guide his career? Uh, no, listen, uh, he's got a good trainer, so I'll, I'll let his trainer uh, re reorganise and, and schedule and, and do everything in the gym. I'll try and do what I can for him outside the ring, getting him on big shows like this. He's, he's with boxer now. He's um, they're going to get behind him, and, and, and rightfully so. There's, there's a lot of potential there with him, as I say. The tickets alone, what, he, what he's doing, he's a, he's a big ticket seller and, and got a big following. You'll see that Saturday night. Paul, obviously, Liverpool's been known for producing a number of fighters. You and your brothers, uh, some of the leading names in that in terms of achievements. A pressure on his shoulders to maybe be the next one coming through to try and achieve what all of you guys, what Tasha, amongst others, have achieved. Listen, there's always pressure from, from fight, for fighters from Liverpool. There's, there's big boots to fill all the time. I turn pro the city had had two world champions, John Hawkinson, eh, John Conti, Paul Hawkinson. They were the two champions. Everyone wanted to be the next world champion since Paul Hawkinson. I came close, my brother Liam finally done it. Um, Stephen came close as well. It, it's big shoes to fill. I keep using the story about Tommy Coyle and Luke Campbell be, trying to become the first British champion from Hull. And like our Liam said, we, we have four in our house at the time, but it just sort of goes under the radar because it's... It's Liverpool and it's a successful fighting city. Um, so yeah, he's got big shoes to fill. He knows what he's got to do, but it's also a good thing. He's he's got a lot of um, a lot of people to look up to and a lot of standards that have been set really high for him. And if you start with high standards, they can only go. You know, you can only get better. In my opinion, you know the bare minimum that you need. He's training in a gym where there's world champions training in there. You know, it's it's, it's a good little setup now under the tons of what's going on. Um, he's watching all these fighters every day he, and you can only learn from them and, and get better. Paul, obviously we haven't had a chance to catch up since um, this past weekend where Callum fell short against Arte Betabiev. Just a bit of time now has passed then. Since then, some time to reflect. What's your takeaway from what we saw this past weekend? Same as what I said on, on, on fight night, the same as what I've said in, in every interview I've done. You know, it, it, he's lost to the better man and, and that's it. You know, Callum said it himself and, and that's all I can say on it really. It's... The rest of it all, we'll leave, you know, we'll leave time to other people to talk about and other people to discuss. But I've, I've said what I, what I think on it. You know, it is what it is. It's top champion, good fighter. Um, we knew it was a big ask anyway before and getting in there, but we were very confident that Callum had the tools to do it. Um, on the night, it wasn't to be. Did he do anything better, harder, better be this is than what you guys had predicted beforehand? No, I've never seen much different from him. I've never seen anyone as strong as him up close. Um, Good at closing the distance, good at um, closing the gaps and, uh, uh, and pot shot and just little shots here and there just to set you up before he lets the big ones go. Even the little ones had, had a lot of power in, but he's obviously a phenom phenomenal fighter as it is and seems to be getting bigger and stronger with age. So, you know, as I say, no, uh, no excuses, he's lost to the better man. How's Callum doing? He's okay, he's, he's always going to be okay. He's got a good family around him, good people around him. You know, he's, he's come home to his missus and the kids and. It all puts everything into perspective. He's he's good. You know, he's he's okay. He's, he's obviously distraught and upset, but he's in a good place. He's, he'll be fine. Final one on him. Obviously, there's going to be talk about what next for him. I know you can't speak on your brother's behalf. He's achieved a great deal within the sport. Do you feel like he still has that desire to try and become a champion at 175 still, or he might reflect now and just think, I've done my bit. I've achieved a great deal. Time to step away. Again. I you're right what you say, I can't answer for him, I don't know. You know, There is still good fights out there for him, it's whether he wants to get himself up for them fights. Someone mentioned before about the possibility of moving up to Cruiserweight with the frame he's got, he probably could, I don't know whether it's going to be a possibility, I don't know what's on his mind. Um, he's his own man, he's his own person, he makes his own decisions, he guides his own career. Um, 
it's entirely up to him. Whatever he does, we'll, we'll back him 100%. You know, it'll be, it'll be a shame if he doesn't fight again because I said to me, Mrs. When I got home, you know, it's coming slowly but surely. It's coming to the end of all, all the four of us boxing, and, uh, and it's, it's been some ride so far. Could still be legs in it yet with Liam, and but with Callum, would have been the youngest and probably or possibly going before Carl, uh, Liam if he decides that. That's a bit strange seeing that because I thought always you'd assume the youngest will be the last one because he was the first, uh, the last one in and the last one out. But you know, we'll, we'll see. It's all on Callum. It's all up to him. But we'll back him whatever he does. What's it like, Paul, just thinking about that, the, like, the journey of the Smith brothers in pro boxing coming towards an end? It's sad, it, it, to be honest with you. It's really sad if, if, if that's the case. As I say, you know, Liam, Liam's, Liam's fighting again. He's, he'll be back as soon as, as soon as he's ready to do so. Um, but I've been thinking that way for a while because I'm retired. I can see it now. Whereas when you're fighting, the last thing you want to think about is retirement or the last thing you want to contemplate is retirement. But Father time catches up with everyone and it is coming towards the end for, for the four of us. Uh, my lad's fighting now, he'll be the next one coming through. And whoever else follows, you never know. But at the moment, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, we always, obviously always look back at boxing with, with, with love and fondness because it was, it, it's our sport, it still is, and we're still involved in the game anyway. But it'd be strange when, when none of us are fighting again yet. Yeah, definitely, it's not something really, I really sort of used to think about much because you never do as a boxer. You'd always got to think about the positives and, and the job going forward, and never the ends or the retimes or what ifs. There's never a what if with boxing. So it's, um, yeah, it's a sad one, but it's we've had we've had a good career and the four of us together, and um, we can be proud. Well, it goes without saying, the Smith family fighting name will continue with your son, no doubt. And it's always been a pleasure. I've always appreciate the time you and your brothers have always afforded to me. Um, just a final one to end on the. Just to get your thoughts on the John Ryder Jaime Munguia fight next week. Yeah, um, I haven't really paid much attention to it. To be fair, I'm not being disrespectful, to, disrespectful to either fighter. Um, good fighters. John Ryder's always seemed a nice lad. To be honest, with you. he's always come to come across a nice lad every time I've met him and seen him. Um, I wish him all the best in that. You know, I'd like to see him do it. Obviously, I'm, I'm back to Britain in that fight, but I think Mungi is a, a, a bit different and a, bit, a little bit special sometimes on his day. But it's whether he's on his day. Uh, and he's had a few off nights. He's had a few where he's looked really well. He's tough to beat. He's, um, he's strong. He's really strong and huge for the weight. Um, I'll, I'll probably... I'll probably have to side with Mungia in that one from what I've seen over the over the, the, the previous fights that they've had. But as I say, I'd love, I'd love to see Ryder too. He's a nice lad. Well, it's a pleasure as always. Thank you and I'll see you at Saturday. Cheers, and Thanks, mate. Saturday.